Yo, what is up guys? So for today, we're gonna to be talking about Destiny 2. Now specifically, we're gonna be looking at the Hawkmoon Guide. This will not contain all of the bosses. The bosses have their own separate video that should be coming out or is already out. Either way, the video will be in the description below. The reason I didn't wanna put the bosses in this video is because the vid that video already is like almost 20 minutes long, if not 20 minutes long. So I didn't wanna add on to that because this video is probably gonna be like 10, 15 minutes. So if you just want to know about the bosses themselves, look in the description below or the comments, it should be there. And I wanted to do this because I didn't want people to like skip all the way to the end to like, like basically like fumble around where it was. I just want to have that video just by itself. So before we get started with this video, so before we start with the video, I just wanted to let you guys know that a high percentage of people that watch my videos are not subscribed according to my analytics. So if you could do me a favor and subscribe, hit that bell notification, I would very much appreciate it. If you like my content, if you like just me in general, that would really help me out. So on with the video. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the actual guide. So you'll spawn in front of the EDZ in front of this like little hole. From there, I'm just gonna show you guys how to get there. Just be just be aware that Warlock, Titan, and Hunter, you guys can all do this without an exotic. It does help, but just know you can you, you, just know that you guys can do it without an exotic. I will say though, having high mobility does help a lot though. So I'll be right back. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the emissaries. The emissaries are essentially three, three taken bosses, which is a taken wizard, which is probably the one you'll see immediately taken cabal captain, which is on the right side. And then a taken captain, which is on the right side of the, or after you get through the cup, the cabal captain. So we're going to go through the wizard and then to the captain. So the wizard is a void shielded wizard. That means you have to have a, a void weapon. Let's talk about the weapons first before I get started. So I don't care what subclass you use. You can use whatever subclass you use, whatever you feel comfortable with. I will recommend you to use either hard light or borealis if you don't have those weapons it's fine just make sure you you have all of the burns at at your disposal so let's say for example i was using my arc super with what was it a solar weapon and a void weapon so just make sure that you're constantly you can you you can use your damage because once you pop their shield, you don't have to use that specific weapon if you don't want to. So just make sure you have that. But if you do have hard light or Borealis, then it makes this encounter supremely easy because you can just switch your burn to whatever burn they, they are. So let's talk about the bosses themselves. 
these are just regular regular enemies that you see in the in the wild but a few things to know is that the wizard will spawn these like taken thrall whatever it's called they're annoying because she can spawn a bunch of them and her actual attack which is these orbs that sp like they'll spawn and then they'll start going towards you and they have a, some somewhat tracking those will kill you if you're not careful they will destroy you if you're not careful so just be aware of that the taken cabal is not that crazy in my opinion the only thing that's really annoying is the fact that his actual weapon feels like you're getting hit by a train but he also throws axiom darts which are essentially these like balls that literally track towards you so you can shoot them once you shoot them just proceed to shoot the enemy and last but not least the captain which i think is the biggest annoyance it, he will throw just constant blights these blights will blind you and do a significant amount of damage towards you and he has a shotgun as well that can actually travel a lot so once you attack the enemies enough where they leave that's when they you have to actually find them so i'm going to show you guys my route to what i was using so i'll be right back So, once you find all the enemies, a few points and tricks, be careful. Those rooms are specifically made to be kill rooms. Kill rooms are basically, if you go into the room, you're dead because everything's just so, so tight. Everything can kill you. The bosses themselves will destroy you and you have extra enemies in there. So just be careful. Don't think, oh, this is going to be easy. They will destroy you if you're not careful. So, once you get that done, 
this is probably where it's gonna get crazy for a lot of people because you're gonna go to the arena that's a, at least that's what i call it so once you get to the arena you're gonna have waves of enemies first at least from the footage that i was getting you get void first then no you get solar first then void and then arc all of the bosses that you killed basically they spawn in again and you have to kill them all with enemies around you the other thing that i did not mention is the fact that you will need to have the the unstoppable mod so one unstoppable one unstoppable champion spawns and then two unstoppable champions uh, are summoned so just be careful use the the strategy that i was using which is basically just shooting them from afar honestly this one's not too hard i i think the hardest thing is going to be the fact that you're gonna have to survive a lot and the rotating burns again like i said they rotate i don't know if they rotate depending on which bosses you killed like the order i didn't pay attention too much so i don't know if that's the case if that's the case you can plan that out a lot easier but if not then it's going to be solar void then arc so again for the first one solar you're gonna have two captains spawn in and i think goblins if i remember correctly kill them and once they're dead you get the next wave which are the wizards the wizards are annoying because again they can destroy you if you're not careful so i'd highly recommend you to destroy them immediately not only that but there's gonna be taken goblins spawning in and ravenous taken goblins which are annoying as hell because they have a slap rifle if i remember correctly they basically does a bunch of damage and it's an aoe weapon as well so if it hits the floor around you you'll take damage from there just attack every enemy as you would as you see fit again like i said don't be afraid to use high ground this is like the best way to do it because at least from the gameplay you're watching currently i was i was this is gameplay from my solo flawless and as you guys can see i'm not using borealis or hard light hard light i didn't want to use because i was i wanted to use my my nighthawk because i didn't have a high rolled borealis and i was just like i don't care i'll just use a i'll use i'll just use this weapon because it does it's really good against like just anything because of the the paracausal shot so i highly recommend it the one thing I'm going to tell you right now off the bat is you have to be careful about the unstoppable champions. The unstoppable champions, if you're not careful, will destroy you. Their boop will kill you. Their shoots will kill or their shots will kill you. They're pretty much just like assholes. So I would recommend you to just kill them, like prioritize them, but don't go kamikaze. Don't just have tunnel vision, obviously kill everything and then prioritize them remember you can bait them you can do whatever you need to to make sure that they don't destroy you and the one the moment where you have two of them that one's going to be a little bit rough for most people i would just tell you to separate them and once they're separated easy picking honestly so after you're done with the arena honestly that's, that's pretty much it aside from the boss obviously once you get to the once you get to this point you're gonna have to take a few routes just watch the video and you'll see how i get through it i'll be right back
So, once you get through the jumping stuff and you are at the boss, that's pretty much it, guys. If you guys want to continue this guide, I will have the video in the description below. Again, I wanted to make the video separate because there's three bosses in this in, in this in this encounter depending on which week you do it and i really just wanted to showcase what the bosses are what the best ways to approach the boss is and that's really it like i just did not want to make this like 40 to like 30 or not yeah it was, it was like 40 to like 30 minute long video so the next video is going to be a lot better because i explain like pretty much everything i did for each encounter so if you guys like this video, let me know in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe. That really does help me out a lot. And other than that, I'll see you guys later.